Okay, so boom, part four of predator protection. The Max C cross out at 10:30, doing way too much. So when we come out of the cell, they down there in a the little scuffle. You know what I'm saying? The police, of course, they going back and forth. You can see the guys who was already on the rock contemplate if they should go over there. You know what I'm saying? And intervene. G. Edgar Hoover can tell. I can too. He say one on one, one on one. Don't nobody move. They kind of just stand around for protection. Now. When the police go in the cell and they drag him, bro, out, it's another police in the cell. We all clearly see him bend down, pick that phone up, and put it in his pocket. But the way he did it, it was almost like he was trying to be slick about, you know what I'm saying, finding the phone. Bro saying, man, y'all make sure I'm straight, man, y'all make sure I'm straight, make sure I'm straight. The dude that he get to fight with, with the dreads, that he didn't want having the boys coming in and saying, same dude that told on the bottom of the hill. When the police grabbing him, he get the scuffling with the police. That he don't punch him, he don't slam him, but he do enough to where it's assault on an officer. Now that's a it's a sleek check-in move. Going in there and find on bro, you already got a snitch label on you and all this. Nine times out of ten, he doing all of this because he trying to go to the back. He trying to get shipped. And ain't no telling what he finna go back there and say. Now that he doing this with the police, he either finna go to maximum security or he finna go to close security. But what it all boiled down to, he trying to get out of this part. And he knowing that he done went in there and snuck bro. It ain't nowhere he can go on the compound where he gonna be safe. It's gonna be some retaliation for what you done did. And them folks done scooped up bruh phone. So while we down there looking and seeing what's going on, I see Sean come out of Big C sale. When he come out of Big C sale, he he like, you know what I'm saying? He got a little weird walk when he come out. And I'm like, man, what, hold on. What's going on? This the same Sean that my silly pulled the butch out, called himself, trying to protect same one uh, Black James was saying, I'm putting him on predator protection. Same one Black James went to bat for and told Big C, you a predator, you know you a predator, stand on and Big C told him, if I want that boy, I'm going to have him. This the same one. So after all of this clear out, we uh we the we seen him get the phone. Jenga who would pull us in the cell. They were like he was like, man, we all seen, you know what I'm saying? They got bro phone, so everybody probably need to be careful. You know what I'm saying? If you got something the best bet, you know what I'm saying, tonight, probably need to go and put that up until we see what's until we find out what's going on. We back in 1030 cell. So after that, everybody step out. We finna resolve this situation with 1030. 1030 was like, man, bro, I don't even want to go through all this no more. You know what I'm saying, bro? I just want to know uh, what, go ahead and uh, I'm going to plead guilty to whatever the charge is, bro. Just tell me what my sanction going to be. I say, I, I say, man, bro, uh, really? I ain't even going to lie to you. Like, I feel some type of way. You know, bro, I understand. You know what I'm saying? And, man, bro, I throw myself at the mercy of the court. And this, isn't that. Whatever the sanction is, however you want to come down on it. Bro, uh, I'm cool with that. Only thing I ask you to consider is, I want to remain. I want to. I want to remain in my POA, in my position of authority. I'm like, that was up. I look at G. Edgar Hoover. G. Edgar Hoover look at me. Me and G. Edgar Hoover look at each other. I said three minutes, no cover, meaning he can fight. He said, man, three minutes, no cover, bro. He said, Maxie, just got a three minute cover, bro. Like, what's up? You like, bro, what you want? Uh, G. Edgar Hoover say. I'm the one who recommended that sanction. That's a whole nother story. He was like, this is your teapot. You know what I'm saying? I, that, that was that was something I, I recommended he did for, for other reasons. He was like, Joe T, you know what I'm saying? Whatever. He was like, that's, that's what it is, bro. You already said you implied guilty. Whatever, whatever. He was like, man, that's what's up, bro. What's up, bro? What we going to do with it? I said, all right, we can go on the series right now. He said, right now? I said, yeah. I said, hold on real quick. I said, I'm going to get my selling. Uh, I'm going to get my selling. Uh, get my selling. Tono. And whoever else was his side, I said, I'll be right back. He was like, that ain't rough that bad. I said, bro, go on and get suited and booted. I said, I'll be here. We can go on and get this over right now. I leave out of the pod. I go holler at the brothers. Tell them what's going on. We go in the cell. We go in. It's a whole lot been going on this day. We go in the cell. I'm, ke I'm keeping the time. G. Edgar Hoover leave out. He's standing on the rock. You know what I'm saying? 
We have uh, somebody turn their music up, you know what I'm saying? Everybody know the GE finna serve violation. It's no cover, so it's going to be a little, you know what I'm saying? So I get on the top bunk. I get on the top bunk. 1030 had a stopwatch where it was really just a watch where the bands done broke off. So he just had the little part of the clock. So we used it as as the as to keep the time on there too. A lot and then put them started using our phone and stuff too. So he had me the little watch. I'm sitting on the top bunk. And time. Now watching a violation is it, it gives you a whole different perspective of what you really involved in versus getting a violation. You getting a violation, you fighting back, you trying to survive. You trying to just make it through. You realize, you know what I'm saying? You trying to, but when you watching it, you you gotta sit and think like, what in the world is this I'm involved in? You literally watch three people fight one person at one time. Like, that's insane. It's designed for you to lose. Not only that, the people who serving the violation really got to put the work in on you. Like, you got to be able to tell that a violation was served. This person come out looking like they was untouched. You can become the business for that. Somebody could ask, oh, who served that violation? You didn't go in there and discipline that person to the extent the violation is supposed to be carried out. You now get the violation. Like, I'm watching this like they literally fighting, fighting. My cell is running out of breath. <laughs> My cell is running out of breath. It's getting funny, you know what I'm saying? But by the time, you know what I'm saying, the three minutes up, they don't put the work in on 1030. 1030 gets up and say, Man, what's up, man? What your what your what your silly? He ain't he ain't getting no violation. I, I'm getting down with the clock. I'm like, what he what's the charges? Like, what's what he getting a violation from? My city said, dang, 1030 dang, bro, what you got going on? He was like, man, I'm just saying, bro, you the reason all this started and this, this, and that, bro. I wasn't even, bro, for real, bro. I didn't sit in here and had to get a violation for three years. Like, man, bro, gotta get something. I said, no, nah. I said, what what's gonna happen here? He got 24 hours to pay the box. And then from there, we'll, we'll do, bro, man, ain't no bro nothing. You old Larry, you got 24 hours to pay that back. And just like 1030 said, you is the reason all of this really going on when you pulled that knife out. But at the end of the day, you need to pay that box back. You ain't got that money in the morning, bro. You know what time it is. Point blank, period. So he said about like, we come out of the cell. That day wrap up, it's locked now. During lockdown, I ain't keeping nothing in my cell. Like I said, when they ran in on Brunnen when they got to fight and they got brush on, I ain't knowing that night they calling from bruh phone, they calling some of the guys' phones in there. They calling them private throughout the night. So when the morning pop, when the when the doors pop and they call, they call child time. Diego Hoover come out of the cell, and I'm noticing he catching all the brothers before they go on the child. He he talking to him. Diego Hoover, I can tell he moved with a sense of urgency, you know what I'm saying? So I'm just sitting on the top rail. I'm chilling. Bro come up the steps. He's like, man, step in the steps. Let me holler at you real quick. I'm like, that was up. So he go in the cell. He man bless his cell. Boom. He closed the door. I'm looking at him. He looking at me. We looking at each other. He said, bro, he said, uh, I ain't trying to be in your business. He was like, you, you ain't get no uh, block calls calling you last night, did you? I was like, nah, I don't even keep my jacket in here like that. You know what I'm saying? I ain't even moving like that, bro. I was like, well, what's going on? He was like, I just hollered at a couple of brothers. He said, man, I got, I had six. You know what I'm saying? I had a couple of missed calls back to back, back to back, back to back, back to back, back to back. You know what I'm saying? They ain't never texting nothing. He was like, man, and all my people know not to even call my phone. Excuse me. He said, all my people know not to call my phone at a certain time. He was like, and anybody who, uh, Trying to get in touch with me, they would have they would have messaged me like they they know he was like so I asked a few of the brothers this morning he was like man it's four other brothers you know what I'm saying who's saying you know what I'm saying they got blocked calls there and he was like man bro uh we all know they got bro phone you know what I'm saying it's uh we probably need to we probably need to uh, uh, uh be on high alert you know what I'm saying they, they, just in case they run in here or whatever whatever because you know bro phone since the phone was over ain't no telling what they seen in the phone you know what I'm saying and me and brother had some We've been conversing about something we've been trying to do, you know what I'm saying? And then this and then that, and ain't no telling what bro had in the phone. So I'm like, ah, oh, what's up? I'm like, we bit that, bit that, bit that, GD on that, GD on that. He was like, ah, right. he was like, when the brother come back, you know what I'm saying? We're probably gonna, you know what I'm saying, pull up and have an OD. 
I said, you think that's safe to do? He was like, what you mean? I said, bro, if they got their phone, I said, nine times out of 10, they were doing all they calling it. And like, they probably watch it too. He said, you're right, you're right, you're right, you're right. He was like, bro, just, uh, we probably just need to inform our every brother, you know what I'm saying, individually, you know what I'm saying, holler at everybody, let everybody know to be on high alert, be chill, whatever, whatever, whatever. I said, there was a, so brother leave out of the cell. We waiting for everybody to come back from child. Now, child is when, in the morning time, anytime child, a lot of sneaking and geeking go on. People feel like when the pod clear out, they can sneak somewhere and do something, you know what I'm saying? They don't want people to see, but there ain't no secrets in the penitentiary. So when me and Diego Hoover get through talking, of course, they steal the child. We come back out on the rock. I'm sitting here. I see Sean come out of Big C Sam again. White boy Rick didn't go to child. When I see Sean come out of this alley, I said, I just kind of looked down there at him. He looked down at me. He see, I peeped him, right? We seen each other. White boy Rick coming up the set, coming up the stairs. Now, Tad T, he probably to see if I want him to bring me. He man, one morning, your T, you like, man, what you got going on, bro? I was like, man, I ain't doing nothing. I was like, hey, T, pull up real quick. He was like, man, what's up, man? He was like, man, you ready? I was like, nah, nah, nah. I was like, chill on there, chill on there. I was like, the guy's got something going on. He was like, man, everything all right? I said, man, not really. I said, man, when they ran in there that night, uh, when they, when bruh got to fight down that last night, you know what I'm saying, they end up getting bruh on, you know what I'm saying, and, and the guy's kind of suspicious right now, wondering, you know what I'm saying, what they found in their phone, I think their phones are locked, you know what I'm saying, they call, he said, all right, all right, I'll hold on to it, Joe T, I'll hold on to it, he was like, but man, what's up, everything else all right? I said, man, dude, man, what, I point my head, you know, one thing in penitentiary you don't do is, is point, so I kind of nod my head, right, I'm like, man, what dude got going on? Man, come on, Joe T. Man, you know what's going on, bro. He, he man, ain't man. He, he, you know what's going on, Joe T. I said, man, this is the second time I've seen him come out. I said, you already knew it's been kind of an issue with him. He was like, no, I ain't know that, Joe T. He was like, man, but he, he's always up there in Big C. Say, man, he's smoking. He's smoking for free, doing what he want around here, man. He's done got real comfortable up there in Big C. I don't know what he's doing, though, but you you know what he's probably doing at this point. If he keeps going up there, I mean, a point, you know, my, uh, Big C's going to make it very obvious what he's trying to do. I said, <laughs> I said, man, I want to holler at you, man. I want to holler at you with Ed because they started coming back from check. I said, man, I'm going to you. I need to holler at a few of the guys. So he bob on off, you know what I'm saying? I pulled up on front of him. I was like, hey, bro, I was like, uh, I don't know if you had your jacket on your leg. Now I said, uh, we walking the top around. Like, Gia Google pulled up on him and said, you know what I'm saying? They were, it's a couple of brothers saying they were, they phone was getting private phone call last night. You know what I'm saying? They done caught bro with the jack. You know what I'm saying? The bro had the phone unlocked. You know what I'm saying? And while I'm talking to him, they green team on the rock, green team on the rock, green gold badge on the rock, gold badge on the rock. Diego Hoover, I look down, Diego Hoover, Diego Hoover pop out of the cell, boom. Black Jane pop out of the cell, boom. Youngster pop out of the cell. All the guys start, because you know, you want to try to come out on the rocks, because times, sometimes they don't really pat you down on the rock. They go to three or four of the guys' cells right off the bat. They go to three, four of the guys' cell, boom. Search they cell, boom. And then all of them together go over to Diego Hoover's cell. Now, at this point, I'm saying to myself, now, bro, <laughs> true enough, it was a one-on-one -on -one fight. But getting him done with that horn and having that phone, that, that phone open, evidently done caused some undue heat. They done came in here and they done searched the guys on the strip of you telling him he got to, you trying to forcefully put this man out of the cell versus figuring it out. Boom, boom. This man done fought you in here. True enough, you had to. It was an unfortunate situation, but your actions caused the situation. And now, here are the repercussions, because ain't no telling what they found in the phone. So, when they down there searching G.A. Hoover, of course, the guys started pulling up, you know what I'm saying? They coming up the steps. I'm telling them, I'm, I'm sitting here with funny folks where I was at, because I guarantee you, they got the eye in the sky on, you know what I'm saying? I'm chilling, you know what I'm saying? Uh, funny folks like, Man, bro, what you think going on? I was like, man, bro, I told you, bro, pulled up on me and said, they, you know what I'm saying, bro, they were calling them phones private. Ain't no telling. He was like, you thinking, bro, bro, leaving the messages in the phone? That's another issue right there. Not only undo he, if them folk got a hold of some information that's concerning the oil, bro, you really finna get it. He said, man, bro, tripping if he doing, you know what I'm saying, and keeping 
What? He was like, man, that's crazy. He was like, man, bro probably want to go on his head in the back. I said, listen, long as them folk don't come bothering me. He said, what you saying? I said, man, listen, bro. These folks know what they got going on, bro. They responsible for their action, bro. Them folks don't listen. I hate that it's turning into a GD situation because this was an isolated situation. Now, because of what I'm affiliated with, I have to be involved. So really, I'm being said, I'm like, that ain't got nothing to do with me. But now that if they done came in and searched GD, GD got to handle this situation. Point blank, period. And they down here in G.A. who will say, yo, this finna be crucial. So why they down there in G.A. who will say, you know, I, I see Black Jack. This was his move right here. Black Jack, he get the rocket like it's here. He, he, he looking around and Sean going in the cell. I see Black Jack do this here. And he mob over and go in Sean's cell. They get through searching G.A. Gahoo, boom, they come out of the cell, don't none of the guys get locked up. They found some tobacco on one, on one person, they ain't doing nothing, you know what I'm saying? You gonna get your little write-up, boom. They mob out of the cell. Now, even after something like that, I don't want no heavy traffic coming to my cell. Cause nine times out of 10, that bro affiliated and whatever's in that phone, they trying to connect the dots. They don't know whose phones they was. But, so, I forgot to tell you something. That night, when they calling the phone, when they were calling private, what the police was doing, another thing, G.A. who was home, what the police was doing, the police walking around more than they normally walk around. What they probably looking for, they trying to see if, if a phone light up in a cell, that way they can pinpoint who cell, you know what I'm saying, so they can figure out what the phone is in, in which cell. So we let it die down for a little minute. They call school call, people go out, boom. Later on in the day, shift change. Shift change, I don't know why people feel like they ain't passing down this information. This is just like people who are in the streets. Those who are in the streets feel like they are more advanced than police. You're not. The game does not advance. The police do. Informers tell information. People tell on themselves. Officers find out things for themselves. They always catch on to what's going on. It's just like in the penitentiary. The game never advanced. No moves. Ne the newest move in the penitentiary when I was there was the drone. Other than that, all the moves get recycled, get recycled like seasons. Throwing it over the fence. Getting it through the annex because people work on the street. Getting it through uh, the laundry because people let the annex. Getting officers to bring it in or going to the VG. Listen to me. They hip to all the moves. They just switch up seasonally. In the streets, dudes feel like they slicker than the police. The police is hip to every single thing you do. And not only that, because... Because how, how they, they do so much research and so and they get so advanced, they hip to what you about to try to do. So quit feeling like you slicking or getting over on the police. They know who the hustlers are, they know who they it just timing is everything. And there's another reason why I didn't like being affiliated. Because for some reason, sometimes when you listening to people who call themselves criminals, you realize they need to be in the dumbest criminals book in America. Like, bro, you them folks know what's going on. Quit thinking you smart, bro. You you're not. So of course during shift change, they probably done, they done let the other shift know what went on on the first shift. They done made documentation of it. You can see it in the books. They know who they done went and searched. Know why they went and searched them. Pretty sure the AI done left some notes. They know what's going on. So shift change, they feel like this is a good time to have an OD. They call the OD. We all meet up. We all meet meet up in the cell. Diego Hoover addresses. Us. I just wanted to call you out there. You know what I'm saying? We having a meeting about um what's been going on. Bro got popped with that phone when the police was, you know what I'm saying, in my cell searching. The police let it be known, you know what I'm saying, they got the phone. It was some information in there, you know what I'm saying, about, you know what I'm saying, moves and people doing this and people doing that. So first, we already do know, you know what I'm saying, it's, it's got to be consequences behind that, you know what I'm saying. I hate that it happened like that with bro, but it's done cause some undue heat. Bro, did the police say anything? Man, bro, when they came in my cell, bro, they were trying to say they know 
Um, the G's got phones and you know what I'm saying? Or whatever the case may be. And he say what he say. The other brother, he was like, man, as soon as they came in my cell, that's what they see, bro. They were like, man, we know it's a phone in here. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, man, I don't know what y'all talking about. Two of the brothers didn't even have a phone. Just so happened the other brothers just didn't have their phone in their cell. So clearly this is a this is something that's falling back on the guys on the strip for bro got him up, bro got him up with the phone. They send a kite through the uh the legal advisor to the back, you know what I'm saying, let bruh know, you know what I'm saying, what's going on or whatever, whatever. Bruh send the kite back and he's saying they've been questioning him and all this, this and that, and he gonna whatever happened when he get out on the compound, that's what was gonna happen. That he he gonna go through whatever he gotta go through. Come to find out they close out uh the dude with the dress, so he got what he wanted, he done escaped that punishment. So we get through having the OD right. We we <laughs> listen. We walking out of the cell. When we walking out of the cell, Sean coming out of Big C cell. He coming out of the cell and he holding his face like this here. I look at Black Jane, Black Jane look at me, me and Black Jane look at each other. He said, I told him, Joe T, I told him. I said, what are you talking about? He said, man, been going to Brock. I said, man, I guarantee you. He said, man, Big C been going to that boy back. He said, man, I knew it. I said, I said, man, what they got to do with you, bro? Man, I told him, Joe T, I'm trying to look out for him. His little man, he done did this and did that. He said, man, I went over and hollered him the other day. You know what I'm saying? I told him I had the tobacco. I told him I had the morphine, whatever he tried to get. I told him he can get it for me. I told him. I don't know why he keep running. I said, bro, if that's what he want to do, then let him do it. He said, man, I'm going to go over and holler at him. I said, man, he said, man, come on with me, Joe T. Come on with me, bro. I said, man, come on. So I, I mob over there with him because I just want to hear What's going on? Sean in the set gets in the cell already. He, he was holding his face. So by the time Black Jane, he don't even knock on the door. He, man, bless this. What you got going on? Sean was taking his stuff and putting it in his laundry bag. He said, man, what you doing, Black Jane? Black Jane grabbed the laundry bag. He said, man, you ain't finna go nowhere, man. You owe me some money. Man, a man, listen, man, man. Man, I gotta get out of here, man. I gotta get out of here. He was like, what you, what's, he was like, what's going on? He was like, man, listen, man, I don't want to go home like this. I don't want to go through this. He was like, man, I don't, I don't, I don't even want to talk about it. I don't even know it. He was like, man, he done smacked me in my face because I done told him I don't want to do that no more. Black guy said, you don't want to do what no more? Man, I don't even want, I don't understand. I don't understand. He was like, man, I, I, didn't, I didn't come here for all of this, man. I'm just... Man, I don't know, man. I just got to get out of here. He's like, man, my people will still pay you. He's like, man, I'll give you their number, man. We can call them right now. Whatever I owe you, Black Jane pulled his phone out. Well, here, what's the, here, we need to go on and call them then because if you finna leave, you did that ain't what it is. But we need to, man, here, man, give me your phone, man. He get on the phone. He called his people and tell them to send the money to Black Jane phone. I'm looking at Black Jane. Black Jane look at me. We looking at each other. I said, man, you good? No, man. I ain't good, man. I ain't good, man. I ain't good. I ain't good, man. I can't believe this, man. Man, I'm up in big sales. I'm up in big C sale. I'm smoking a cigarette with his cellar. Big C's not even in the cell. He's in the shower. He's in the shower. So we smoking, and I'm already saying to myself, this was a setup. We smoking a cigarette. Big C. Comes in, he's got his, he's got that big maroon robe on. He steps in the cell. As soon as he comes in, he closes the door. He closes the door, and I hear the door because he slams it so hard it knocks out. It knocks out the the, the thing that's keeping the door uh uh uh, uh rigged. It's keeping the door rigged. So when that hits the floor. He takes his robe off as if I'm not even right there. He just he just strips down. He strips, he takes his robe off. He reaches on his shelf and he's just right there. And I just looked at his cellar and his cellar just kept on smoking the cigarette. He said, man, he grabbed, he grabbed his boxers and, he, and he's putting his boxers on. He turns at me. He was like, what you looking at? I was like, man, I ain't looking. He was like, man, I'm going to let you get yourself together. Man, I'm going to get out of here. He said, Man, I get ready to leave, man. He grabbed my shoulder. He grabbed my shoulder and turned me around. And I turned around and I looked at him. And he was like, where you going? I was like, man, I'm going to let you get dressed, man. This is, this, is, this is your privacy. He was like, man, he just got out of the shower. He was like, I'm just going to get out of here. And I'm, I'm turned. I'm, he's got me. 
and he reaches in and grabs me. He grabs the middle of me. He grabs me and he, and he pulls me and he kisses me. And when he kisses me, his cell is standing behind me and he rubs me on my back and told me that I was okay, that everything was going to be okay. He told me I could sit down. He told me, just sit down. You're going to be okay. And I was like, no, 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 no. I'm, I'm going to get out of here. I'm going to get out of here. And at this, oh my God. Oh. Black Giant said, man, you good? <laughs> At that point, he just, oh my God, I just got to get out of here. Just let me get my stuff. He said, no. He said, no, man, you good. You can stay if you want to. You good, bro. You good. I got to go. I got to go. He just started doing to himself. He started doing to himself. He told me, he told me to finish it. And I was just scared. I was just scared and left. I don't want to talk. I just want to. He started packing up his stuff. Black guy said, well, I need to make sure I get my money first. In my mind, I'm saying no empathy, no sympathy, no nothing. Like, at the end of the day, I need to get my money. Whatever happened to you, it happened to you. I need my bread, point blank, period. I told you I could have protected you. You still choosing to go up here doing what you want to do and not understand penitentiary rules is in effect. These predators is not here to play. Even though they coming and acting like they cool you, they friend with you, true enough, Black James was coming in the form of a, of a predator too. Not he wasn't going to do that to you, but you was most definitely going to get extorted out of something to some, to some level, but you wouldn't have had going on whatever you had going on uh, with Big C up here had you, had you follow and done what he, what it, whatever he told you. He was like, man, all right, all right. Me and Black James walk out of the cell. I said, man, that's crazy. He said, man, that boy crazy up there. I said, what you me? He said, man, man, bro, I heard a lot of stories. He was like, bro, you like, I said, bro, listen, you told him, bro. Man, I did, Joe T, I did. My silly coming down the still. I told him, man, bro, that's messed up, bro. Bro, wrong for that. And it used to be the business. I said, man, penitentiary rules and fit. My silly come on. He said, man, what's up? What's going on with Sean? I said, bro, you might need to go in there and check on him. <laughs> Black Giant said, hey, prepare yourself and, and stay away from him. Stay away from him. Because what normally happens in a penitentiary, if he stay on the compound, regardless of where he go, that's in him now. That's that's a part of who he <laughs> My son said, what happened to him? I said, go on in there. He going, he going to say, Black Jane, go on his way. I go on my way. I'm sitting in the cell. My son said, Joe T, man, Big C got to go, man. I said, so I said, do what? Man, bro, did he take, man, bro, bro, that's crazy, bro. Bro, how he just, bro, that's crazy, bro. Ain't no, you, man, for, he can't get, I said, bro, that ain't got nothing to do with GD. Man, for, man, bro, I can't wait to go home. You know how many times I said that when I seen the situation? Man. I can't wait to go home. <laughs> I'm going to tell y'all a story about it, bro. <laughs> when he got out there home, too.